How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video I want to cover the brand new Microsoft PC Manager tool which is free and available to everyone. Whether you're running on an older laptop all the way up to the latest and greatest in desktop hardware, pre-built or built your machine yourself, as long as you're running on Windows 10 or 11, the Microsoft PC Manager application is available to you and it's something which features so many useful Windows optimizations, settings and system maintenance features to ensure that your system is always running as efficiently as possible. In this video I'll be showing you how to get the application and use it on your system alongside demonstrating some of the features of available to help you get better results on your system with just a few clicks. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. But first of all, you need to navigate over to Google where you can then search for Microsoft PC Manager. You'll then find the official Microsoft download section, but you could also navigate down to the TechSpot mirror. I prefer to use the TechSpot version just to make sure that I'm actually accessing a legitimate source, but you can use the official Microsoft download as well. Wherever you're deciding to download this from, follow the on-screen prompts to download the application. Then select save, then simply open up the EXE once it's downloaded. Navigate to the bottom to accept, then select install. Once completed, select launch now. When you first open up the application, it may notify you with pop up of new features which you can check out, you can choose to try those out now or just select exit out and go through the main program. Well first of all starts off with the home section. This is where the bulk of the optimizations can be found and they're really easy to access. There are tons of different options with Inside of Fear, many of which you're able to manually go into the back end and do with Inside of Windows, but this application makes it super quick, easy and simple to jump in, do some quick system maintenance, optimize your PC, find large files, find the latest drivers, Windows updates, antivirus scans, you can practically do everything with Inside of this really small compact app and it's really intuitive to use. Starting off with the home section we have the PC boost feature which will aim to reduce or clear out temporary files in the system alongside closing background applications and services that aren't being used or aren't 100% necessary to reduce overall RAM usage. I'm going to go ahead and select boost now and that instantly freed up 1.3 gig of temporary files for my system and reduced my RAM usage ever so slightly. Obviously if you have less RAM on your system or have a more cluttered system you could see better results from the memory usage. Heading down to health check this will give you a quick rundown of system logs, recent files, applications to disable for system startup to make system startup faster or other quick and easy recommended optimizations. If you want to select something, simply go ahead and select it, but if you would like to stop the application performing a certain optimization, just unselect the box for this, go to the top right, then select proceed. Once completed, head back to the home section, we can then navigate down to process. Inside of here you'll get a full list of all of the applications which are currently running on your system at this exact moment. This can show you how much the memory usage is, so you can identify the programs which are taking up more system resources, or programs you might not realize are running in the background, and you can just simply navigate over to them, select end, that's it. That program has then been completely closed out and it can help you identify potentially resource hogging applications. We then have deep cleanup and startup. Heading into deep cleanup, this will do a full system scan of tons of different temporary files. You have your DirectX shader cache, delivery optimization, Steam cache, and web browser cache. Again, if you would like to stop the application deleting certain items like your temporary files, just unselect the option. I've decided to select all of these options for myself, but again, customize this list for you. At the top, you'll be able to see the estimated file size that's going to be freed up and select proceed. Going over to the home section once again, navigating down to startup. Inside of this section, you'll be able to find all of the applications which are automatically going to boot every single time you log into Windows. For the most part, you want to have as many of these disabled as possible unless they are really essential. Every application that's automatically booting up when you log into Windows is slowing down your boot up times, taking up resources and CPU cycles by running these applications in the background when you may not have any intention to even use them. For instance, I rarely play games on the Epic Games Launcher, so I don't need this open all the time on my PC. To stop something automatically booting, just go over to the flicker switch and turn this to the off section. If you run into any incompatibility after doing this, just come back and turn the application back on. And that's it for the main home section. Heading down to protection, this is where you can find the Microsoft Defender antivirus to do a quick scan on your overall system, Windows updates, browser protection, taskbar repair, and restore app defaults. Starting off with the Microsoft Defender antivirus, we can go ahead and hit scan. This is a relatively in-depth scan, so depending on how slow or cluttered your system is, this can take a little while, but it's always recommended to do this once every month or so, just to stay on top of your system security. Go ahead and select done. Next is the Windows update section. This is really handy. Not only will this apply the latest antivirus updates to Microsoft Defender, but it can also download optional Windows updates alongside driver updates. If anything's outstanding with Inside of here, you can choose to update it, select the options. Once your selection has been made, go to the top right, hit update. Browser protection, this is where you can adjust the default browser in which you're using on your system if you wish to do so. If you've made any custom alterations to the Windows taskbar or its themes, you can navigate inside of the taskbar repair section and restore all of the default themes and layouts for the Windows taskbar if you want to go 
back to the stock settings. Last but not least for commonly used files, at the bottom you can navigate to restore default apps, have any files with a web extension which will automatically open into a browser. You can change the browser these files will open into, alongside adjusting the program you're going to be using for opening PDF documents. We then have the storage section. This section is absolutely phenomenal and it covers an optimization I do cover every now and then, where you can easily identify large files on your system, find out where tons of storage space is being taken up, and quickly and easily remove that, or just further sort your storage out so it's not all lying on one drive, taking up tons of space. At the top we have a really basic deep cleanup. This is very similar to the option we had earlier on in the video. Heading back to the storage section, we then have downloaded files. We can either select all, downloaded files just in the documents folder, picture folder, compressed, video, audio files. This can help you identify any downloaded files which you haven't accessed in a while, which could just be sat on your PC that you have no intention of using or don't need anymore, and quickly and easily delete them. Next up is one of the most useful optimizations in this entire application, the large files section. This used to be a bit more of a pain to identify large files with inside of the Windows file system by manually searching for them yourself, but you can quickly and easily select the drive you want to scan for large files or select all disks. I'm just going to be going with the C drive, but most of you might want to go up to all disks, then select large files. This will then identify, list and label exactly where these files are and how large they are across your entire system or the selected drive. Now, as easy and as simple as this is, please do not go and just start deleting files that you aren't entirely sure if you need or not. Some files could be video files for games, for cutscenes or other important files which could run into compatibility issues with running applications. You'll be able to tell pretty quickly if you need them anymore or not. Another really useful option with inside of here is you can actually change the file size to show files just over 10 megabyte, over 50, over 100 or over a gig. That way you can find really large files. Again, if you want to do this for the whole system, exit out, change the search parameter to a particular drive or go to all disks. If I hit search for large files now, there is going to be a ton of really large files that I have stored on my PC. But you can find exactly where these files are located by going over to the path on the right hand side. So you can double check the files. You can also open the file if you want to double check that you do or don't want to delete it. All you need to do is find the large files you want to get rid of, select them. You'll then be shown at the bottom left how much you're going to be removing from your system. Once you've made your selection, go over to the right hand side to permanently delete and that will then be completely cleared out of your system. And it's just that simple and easy to do. You also have a really handy option at the bottom to navigate over to the storage sense options, which can help you stay on top of your system maintenance automatically on Windows 10 or Windows 11 systems. Storage Sense is really useful and I like to run this on all of my systems. You can also change the configuration of how often Storage Sense manually runs and the parameters it runs under. Once you've made your selections, what you need to do is exit out. Heading down to the app section, going over to process management. Again, this is going to show you all of the applications running on your system like it did in the home page, but this is where you can find the option if it ever moves. Again, if you want to end a particular application for any reason, go over to the right, select end. That will then close out the entire application tree and stop it running on your system until you open it again. You'll then be given a basic rundown of startup apps, how long it took your system to boot the last time it did restart, and if you have any high impact applications which could be worthwhile turning off for a quicker system boot. You'll then have a shortcut for manage apps which will take you to the add or remove applications feature with inside of Windows, but you can quickly and easily select any applications you no longer wish to have, go over to the three white dots on the right hand side, select uninstall, and get rid of any applications you no longer need or want on your Windows PC. Last but not least we then have the toolbox section. I personally do not use much with inside of here, but you can quickly and easily access tools such as screenshot, closed captions, notepad, calculator, and you can customize this section with other features. The toolbox feature is a bit lackluster at the minute, but hopefully with new updates coming to the Microsoft PC Manager, we'll get more useful tools with inside of here, or just at least decent shortcuts for more useful applications. And for a quick tip, if you are going to be making use of Windows screenshots, I wouldn't bother using this application. All you need to do is press the Windows key, Shift and S on your PC at any time, highlight the selected area, and you've instantly made a screenshot. Heading over to the settings option, you then have the option to automatically turn on Smart Boost, where PC Manager will automatically boost your PC when RAM usage is high or you have over one gig of temporary files. You can set up custom shortcuts, navigate to the bottom where you can set the options if you want to have PC Manager boot automatically with Windows. You can also opt into the early access of new features and automatic updates if you wish to do so. If you're someone that likes to just set and forget things, I would definitely recommend potentially looking into enabling early access and enabling the Smart Boost feature so you can just have this running in the background automatically on your system, keeping on top of your system maintenance and ensuring that your system is running optimally at all times. And that's it, the Microsoft PC Manager tool. There's nothing in this application that's super revolutionary, especially compared to other applications we used to be able to get from other big name companies in the past, but it's fantastic to see Microsoft jumping in on this and actually applying a first party solution, even if it's just to quickly and easily access optimization features which are already baked into Windows, but in a much more user-friendly format. I personally think this application is a massive win and a great move moving forward, and I can't wait to see which optimizations and features they add to this next. And there you guys have it. I would highly recommend taking the time to watch one of the two videos on screen now. Check out the links in the description 
description down below for other videos that could interest you, and make sure to leave a like if you are satisfied with your results. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.